Stefan, thank you. More than 400 people testing positive for the coronavirus today. We've lost four more neighbors to complications of the virus. Here's a look at the latest numbers. Our active total now 4,299 and sadly 234 people have now died. Right now there are 364 COVID-19 patients in the hospital in our region as we head into day 18 above that 15% capacity for a trauma service area B, which does include Lubbock County. In the last four weeks we've lost 100 people to this and it's really hard to think about. Let's bring in our medical expert Dr. Samir Islam for just an update on what's going on now. Doc, it's always a pleasure to have you with us. We've had more doctors and nurses speaking out recently, begging people to take care of themselves. Can you talk about the strain that this surge is putting on our system and, and on our workers? So, so far, this has been the worst it's ever been since the pandemic started. We have multiple hospital floors in both hospitals being converted to COVID patients. In addition, we have multiple intensive care unit units that are fully COVID only patients. And these patients are not doing well. We are reaching our max capacity for the local hospitals to take care of normal patients. You know, unfortunately we've lost several of our healthcare workers too during this time. So how short staffed are our hospitals right now? So the problem is that we are getting more and more people who are getting exposed to COVID-19 and those people getting exposed are healthcare workers. And so one COVID-19 positive patient can inadvertently expose maybe 50 to 75 healthcare workers, just that one individual, which means that those healthcare workers have to go home, have to be quarantined. And because of that, we're trying to get more and more people to come into Lubbock from Governor Abbott's declaration to hopefully give us the support that we need. Yeah, you know, I've heard from a few people frustrated because they wanted a rapid test, but they were told they couldn't get one. Hmm. Are there certain, is certain criteria for patients to receive a rapid test versus the, uh, the regular ones? Yeah, so usually it's for those patients that typically have some of the more common symptoms with COVID-19, the fevers, the cough, the shortness of breath. If you've been exposed to somebody who's had COVID-19, you may not be able to get a rapid test from that, but usually it's for those patients who actually are having symptoms or at high risk who, or who may be going to a high risk situation, such as a nursing home or a place like that. Okay, and you know, we have seen, um, speaking of tests, we've seen those ads from different sources marking those at home COVID tests you can do yourself. What do we know about those? Are they accurate? So let me be very clear on this. They are 100% not accurate. Don't be fooled in trying to get a at home test. There is no criteria for how they work. We don't know if they actually are accurate or not. They're just marketing I would say they're marketing things to try and get people to feel comfortable by getting an at-home test, which is completely not the right way to approach this. Good to know there. Mm -hmm. You know, more people in our hospitals now, of course. What's the latest on treatments available for the most sick out there? Anything new for those folks who are coming in for hospital treatment? So we're still doing the things that we did before, IV steroids, remdesivir, plasmapheresis, and it does work for some patients. I will tell you though, we are getting more and more studies and clinical trials coming out. So I'm hoping in the next few weeks to the next few months, we'll have better treatments for our patients. Excellent. Dr. Samir Islam, thank you so much as always for being with us and uh, giving us the right info at the right time for everyone who needs to hear it. We, we certainly appreciate you every time we were able to come on with us. We'll talk to you again soon. Thank you. All right. You know,